Hello everybody, Mobius1 here, bringing you a video on how I set up my maps using the website Roll20.net for my Star Wars role-playing game series, Fortune of the Liberator. I do want to give you a heads up that I'm recording this on my laptop while I'm out of town, so that should explain why my mic sounds terrible and why there's no face cam. This video was first requested by YouTube user 42monkeys, but several members of my Discord has also messaged me asking questions about how I set things up. So if you have anything you'd like to see me make a video on, drop a comment or join my Discord and ask me there. Link to that's in the video description. So here you can see I'm on the My Games page on Roll20.net. You will need a Roll20 account, though they are free. I am using a subscription account, however, uh, nothing in this video is will require you to have a subscription. You can do everything that I'm about to show you with a free account. Here you can see my Star Wars Fortune of the Liberator game with all the players that are currently active in it. However, we, for the sake of this video, we're going to create a new game. All right, so when you hit New Game, it's going to bring you to this. Most of this is self pretty self-explanatory, so we're just going to call this Test Game. Um, we'll just tag it AAA because we need a tag. I don't know if we need a tag or not, but whatever. Um, you can choose a character sheet for the game that we play. Uh, how do we do this? It should be in here. Can we? Oh, we could search. Star Wars. Here we go. So there's actually a couple Star Wars... Character sheets already loaded in here, so you got the final, final. Oh my goodness, Fantasy Flight Games uh, sheets in there. The D6 Saga Edition. We use the revised system, so the D20 system. So we're just gonna go with that. There you go. You get a nice picture of it. This is the character sheet that we use, and that's it. I'm ready. Create game. All right, so it'll take you to your game's main page. You can put a little uh, banner there. You can show uh, your your character icon is going to show here. Your avatar. Um, I honestly don't worry about doing anything else on this page. I just go straight into launch game and it's going to bring you to a blank map. Now, I'm going to assume that most of you are pretty familiar with how to use Roll20 already. Um, I don't want to go over all the details on everything that's here. This is more just how to get the maps set up, but, uh, I guess the one tip I will say is that by holding the right mouse button and dragging around, you can pan the map. And by holding uh, Alt and scrolling the mouse wheel, you can zoom. So the first thing you're going to want to do in order to get your maps uploaded is to actually go to your art library. So if you go up here to the top right corner, the second icon above the chat bar or chat uh, menu is going to be art library. If you click that, that will bring you to this and you will see you will should have access to a bunch of free assets already just for creating an account that you can use. Most of these, honestly, I have not gone through all these, so I'm not even sure what's in here. But it looks like we've got a bunch of tokens um, that you can just use by clicking and dragging onto the board. You can make them bigger or smaller if you want. Like I said, I'm not going to go into too much detail on how to use Roll20. Uh, if you guys want me to make a more in-depth tutorial on how to use Roll20, let me know. I'm sure... There are some out there already, though. Um, I see dungeon tiles. Okay, so yeah, look. So there are some maps in Roll20 already. Wow, I probably should have gone through here. Um, mega maps. Uh, okay, interesting. Anyway, but that's not what you guys are here for. You want to know how to get your own maps in here. Well, for that, you're going to need to click My Library on the right here. And you can see a bunch of stuff that I've already uploaded. Um, but we're not going to be worried about these because these are all for, um, Fortune of the Liberator. And obviously you can see once you, uh, upload a, uh, some sort of art asset into your library, it goes to every game that you do, not just that particular game. So if I was playing multiple, uh, games on Roll20, it, I could share art assets between them. So what you're going to need to do is you're going to need to find some maps. Um, here's how I do it. I just go over to Google. I typed in Star Wars miniatures maps um because i used to play when i was in high school a star wars miniatures game that used all these colorful maps and yeah you just kind of have to take some time and do some searching on google honestly uh let me see if i can find one we use this one maybe we can use this one yeah here's a good website for for maps 
Let's find one that looks like we could use it in this video. Docking Bay 94 is the one I was looking for. Perfect. So here's a map. We would right click this. We would save it and you would save it to your computer. Hooray. I'm pretty sure I already have that map. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to now click upload over here on the right. Choose a file. Um, I don't know if it's in this directory, though. Yes, it is. It's right here. Map Docking Bay 94. So we'll double click that. It's going to take a second, especially with a map file, because they're quite a little bit larger. But there it shows up under recent uploads. You can make um, folders for these if you want. So I've got different folders for different things that I want quick access to. I'm not going to put this into a folder because I'm not going to be using it after this. But now the next thing, this is one of the easiest things to miss and probably throws a lot of people off is you need to change what layer you're interacting with in Roll20. So the second icon on the top left is your active layer. You can see right now we're on the objects and tokens layer. We want to change that to the map and background layer. And I'll explain why we're doing this once we get this all set up. So now that we're on the map and background layer, you're going to drag this image anywhere onto this grid and release it. And there's your map. Yeah, it's small. Uh, what we're going to do is we're going to bring this to the top, but not all the way to the top. You know, I'll show you why here in a second, and we're going to enlarge it. Um, now, when you just click and drag something in Roll20, it is going to snap to the grid. So you see right here, uh, this is aligned to that horizontal grid line, but it's actually halfway between the vertical grid line. So if I release this right now, it actually stretches the image to the closest grid point. And that is not great. That is not something we want to do because this map has grid, like grid boxes on it already. So we're going to need to find a way around that. And the way around that is by holding the Alt key. So if you hold the Alt key, whenever you do any sort of adjustment, it is going to not snap to grid. But you may notice a problem as we adjust the height and width of this with the Alt key, and that is we are stretching the image. This is where the fun begins. We have to manually align this map to this grid. And that would be easy if you were to take this image into uh, like Photoshop or something and cut off the, um, the border around the outside. Because if we zoom in and look at this, you can see that the, the top left corner of this first grid box is not the top left corner of the image. So when we move this image and it snaps into a grid space, it's not actually in the grid space it, because the image starts up here. So if you were to crop this all the way around the outside so that the top left corner of the image was actually the top left bo or, uh, corner of the first grid box, this would be a lot easier, but I'm going to show you the annoying way to do it because I did not go around and crop all those. Um, so the first thing we're going to need to do is find out how many grid units wide and tall this image actually is. And that's easy because it's numbered and lettered. So we can see that it's 22 units tall. And we have 26, 27, 28, 29, 30, 31, 32, 33, 34. 34 wide. So it's 34 by 22. What I'm going to do is I'm going to go up to my page toolbar for this room. I'm going to click page settings and I'm going to change the width not to 34 by 22, but I'm actually going to change it to 30, whoops, 35 by 23. I'm going to do it one wider than it actually is in both directions, just so I have a little uh, extra room to work with. As a matter of fact, let's do two, 37 by 24. We're going to add two. Uh, extra grids in each direction just so we have a little bit of wiggle room and then we'll hit this page toolbar button to get rid of that and we're going to stretch this out to almost fill the whole page okay so now we're going to zoom in on this top left corner and we're going to try to get the top left corner of this first grid box in the corner of our of our actual grid so we're going to hold the alt key we're going to click and drag and we're going to put that tuck that corner nice and neat in there 
right about there. Now what you can notice right away is that these vertical lines, the roll 20 grid lines, and the grid lines on the map, they actually look like they're pretty well aligned. Yeah, I think maybe I might want to take it in just a little tiny bit because it looks like by the time it gets to this edge of the map, the grid line on the map is a little bit further than the grid line for roll 20. So what I'm going to do is I got to find the little this thing here. Hold alt and shrink that in just two pixels there. That looks a lot better. So now all of those vertical lines are aligned. However, if we look at the horizontal lines, you can see that this horizontal line on the map doesn't quite reach the horizontal line in roll 20. And the same goes for the rest of them, which means the map is a little bit squished vertically. So we need to come down here to the bottom. We need to find this little box over here so that we can stretch it vertically. But I want to be zoomed out enough so that I can see this line here. Because basically we need to stretch this down so that this line between the 21 and the 22 is matches, lines up with this line here. So we're going to hold Alt and we're going to drag this down all the way down until those lines match right about there. And actually that is not enough because now that line matches there. But as we go up, we can see that these slowly fall out of sync. So we didn't pull it down quite far enough. We actually have to pull it all the way down to this line. And now you can see all of the horizontal lines are all lined up as well as all of the vertical lines. And actually, it looks like it gets a little bit out of sync up at the top here. So I could shrink it down a, a little bit if I was trying to be as absolutely perfect as possible. I can like bring this up like a pixel or two. Um, but it's going to be tough to get it absolutely 100% perfect because a lot of these images are scanned. Um, so they're not, the, the images themselves are not perfect. And now, now that we've got that all set up, we can go back into the page settings. We can remove two units from each of the width and the height to bring it back to 35 by 22. Click OK. Close the page window. And did I do my math wrong? Is it not 35? Was it 34? It looks like I've got one extra. It might have been 34. Math is hard. There we go. And now we have our map. Now, the reason we did this on the map layer, other than the fact that it's called the map layer and background, is now if we switch back to the objects and tokens layer, now we can no longer move and drag and interact with that map. That is on a lower, you know, further beneath layer. It's like a background now. And as long as you never go back to the map and background layer, that will never move. Um, that's that's set, and there we have it. Docking Bay 94 map, perfectly in line with the grid, using Roll20. Like I said earlier, you can trim the uh, the border around the image to make it a little bit easier to do all that. Then you could just snap it to the grid. You don't have to worry about aligning the, the grids on the map with the grids in Roll20. But that is how I do it. Um, Hopefully this helps you guys out with your own games. Like I said, if you have any other questions, feel free to leave a comment or join my Discord. Check out Fortune of the Liberator if you haven't already. It's been really fun so far. Uh, I believe three sessions are public now. We'll have session four will be going live next Friday. So check it out if you like tabletop gaming or Star Wars role-playing games. It's pretty fun, and things are just starting to heat up. All right. Thanks again. Mobius one here. We'll see you next time.